In this video, we're breaking down the different types of IV fluids, specifically isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic solutions. That way you can understand it easier and pass your nursing school exams. Let's dive in. Let's start with isotonic solutions. When you think about isotonic solutions, think balance. Isotonic is where the body wants to be. That's where it's in balance. And the body is all about balance. So when you give an isotonic solution to a patient, it won't cause fluid to shift any which way. It doesn't cause fluid to shift inside or outside of the cell it keeps the cells in balance. This means that there's the same osmotic pressure inside and outside the cell, resulting in no major shifts in fluid. Now, some key nursing assessments that you will need to keep in mind if you are administering giving isotonic solutions are to monitor for both hypovolemia worsening and hypervolemia. Even though these isotonic fluids should not cause a major fluid shift either way, if the body becomes too overwhelmed, it can shift to either hypervolemia or hypovolemia. So monitoring for symptoms of this should be toward the top of your nursing assessment. And as with any medication or intervention, getting a baseline assessment of your patient will help you to recognize when symptoms appear or change, and it will help you react quicker. So making sure that you have baseline vitals, especially a good blood pressure before administering any IV solution or fluid will be very, very important for you. Now, the isotonic solutions you need to know about are 0.9% normal saline, lactated ringers, and 5% dextrose in water, or D5W. Now, D5W can be a little tricky to remember because technically 5% dextrose in water is isotonic when it's in the bag, but when it's in the body, it's hypotonic. So inside the body, it will be considered hypotonic. Now, why does this happen? So let's take a closer look so you really understand what this means. D5W has a lot of glucose in it, and when it goes into the body, the body quickly uses up the glucose. And what happens when the body uses up the glucose? Well, it immediately takes away those particles, leaving more water than particles now. So when 5% dextrose in water is given, it's isotonic in the bag, but it's hypotonic in the body because there's more water than particles as the body uses up all that glucose. Now I know these different types of IV solutions can be a lot to remember, so if you're a Nursing SOS member, be sure to download the fluids and electrolytes study guides that we have for you inside the Nursing SOS membership community to help you learn all of this faster and easier. Now that brings us to the next type of IV fluid, which is hypotonic solutions. When you think hypotonic, I want you to think about little hippos. I like to call it hypotonic. Hypotonic solutions have more water than particles. So when you give a hypotonic solution, the water moves into the cells, makes them big and round and chunky like little hippos. Hypotonic solutions will have more water than solutes when compared to isotonic solutions. So this causes the cells to soak up all that water and the fluid and moves into the cells. Then the cells swell up like little hippos. So remember, hypotonic, hypotonic. The hypotonic IV solutions that you need to know for nursing school are one half normal saline or 0.45% saline, a quarter normal saline or 0.225% saline, one third normal saline or 0.33% normal saline. And like we talked about before, 5% dextrose in water or D5W when it's in the body. And some key nursing assessments and interventions you will need to know as the nurse administering hypotonic solutions is to make sure that the patient is not already in a fluid volume deficit. Remember, hypotonic solutions are filled with water and less solutes, making the fluid shift into the cells. So it's important to monitor your patient for any hypovolemia or hypotension when this is being administered, especially if it is for a prolonged period of time. It's also important to use cautiously in patients who have an increased intracranial pressure or ICP because they are at risk for it because of that, that fluid shift can occur. And and one last thing to remember is hypotonic solutions should not be given with blood products because this can cause hemolysis of the red blood cells because of those fluid shifts. The red blood cells will actually burst. Now, the opposite of hypotonic IV solutions is hypertonic IV solutions. So let's think about what that would mean. If hypotonic solutions are filled with water and less solutes, then hypertonic solutions are 
filled with more solutes and less water. Hypertonic solutions have so many solutes compared to the water inside of it. So when that super concentrated solution comes into contact with the cell, the cell says, oh man, here, have some water, and it gives its water away. And when the cells give away their water, they shrink more and more. So these cells are shriveled up little itty bitty baby cells. Hypertonic solutions have more solutes than water compared to isotonic solutions. Now the large amount of solutes in the fluid will cause that fluid inside the cells to move out of the cell and the cells in the body to shrivel up. So think of them as super energetic and hyper little cells. They're using up all their energy and they're becoming skinny and tiny and itty bitty. Now there are a lot of hypertonic IV solutions, including 5% dextrose in 0.9% normal saline, 5% dextrose in 0.45% normal saline, 5% dextrose in lactated ringers, 10% dextrose in water, 20% dextrose in water, and 50% dextrose in water, 3% saline, and 5% saline. A major thing to remember when administering hypertonic solutions are to monitor for hypervolemia. Remember, hypertonic solutions have more solutes than water, so they put the intracellular fluid inside the cells into the extracellular space outside of the cell, expanding the volume. So the key is making sure that volume doesn't expand too much and lead to fluid volume overload. So hypertonic fluids also have a high glucose concentration. And remember that higher amount of solutes in water and it can quickly cause hyperglycemia, so blood glucose levels should really be monitored too. Due to the high concentration of solutes, these can be irritating to the surrounding tissues when it's administered peripherally, so they're best given through a central access IV. Now, you know your nursing exams and the NCLEX are going to throw a lot of tricky questions at you about IV fluids, so click on this video here for the best strategies for how to pick the most correct answer and pass your exam. And if you loved this video, right love in the comments below and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.